welcome to Our That Place and Praise, a channel that explores faith creatively. I'm Ginger, so glad you're here with me. In this video, we'll talk about Psalm 71 using Pam Farrell's book, Discovering Hope in the Psalms. Before, we already did one journaling page with this book, and if you want to revisit that discussion on Psalm 73, we can uh, you can check the link at the end of this video or on the description below. The title was uh, Psalm 73 When Life's Unfair. For now, we'll discuss Psalm 71. Later, I'll focus on verses 19 to 21. And let me read that for you. Um, Your righteousness, O God, reaches the high heavens. You have done great things, O God, who is like you. You who have made me see many troubles and calamities will revive me again. From the depth of the earth, you will bring me up again. You will increase my greatness and comfort me again. Now, there are so many other beautiful verses in this psalm, and I encourage you to go through them reflectively during your quiet time. In this chapter, the psalmist is putting his hope in the Lord by declaring, Lord, in you do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Especially when you feel so broken and out of control, when life just crashes down on you like like a huge wave. You just want to crawl sometimes under under the protection of someone greater, someone stronger. That's what a refuge is. It's your hiding place. It's a place where your enemies cannot penetrate. It's a place where you can heal, where you can cry and feel free. It's where you can actually hear God say, Son, daughter, I'm here and I understand. I'm with you in this tough situation and I got this. You can leave it to me. That's what this psalm is about. It's a prayer that asks God to stay faithful and to not forsake us when our strength fails. It's a prayer that asks God to not cast us off when we're old and weak or when we are surrounded by accusers and we can't fight back. Psalm 71 helps us dig deeper into the different kinds of enemies and calamities we encounter. And for each of the, those things we suffer, we are asking God to deliver us. I, I like the phrases in verses 20 and 21 because they say, it says there, um, revive me again. The psalmist is asking the Lord, bring me up again, comfort me again. The, psalm, the psalmist said again three times here. If you read through your scriptures, it, it was mentioned three times. And that just means that he has already been revived before. He has already experienced God's comfort before. And he knows God will be faithful to help him again. Friends, you can do the same thing as what this psalmist did. No matter how many times you find yourself in trouble, you can also tell God repeatedly, Lord, please restore me again, comfort me again. Please don't put me to shame and heal me again. Now think about it. What kinds of enemies do you have? What life-threatening illnesses do you face? Are there people who hate you, people who tell lies about you behind your back or who judge you falsely? Like, Are there people who've stolen from you, whether they stole something as tangible as money and property or as abstract as your reputation and dignity? Think about these things while you pray Psalm 71 because um, the psalm puts into focus the hope we have in God. It, it focuses on the Lord's righteousness and on great things He has done before, which He can do over and over and over again. Psalm 71 talks about God being a fortress and someone who can rescue us from the unjust and cruelty of man. And this is why for this book journaling, I decided to draw a child who's riding on her daddy's sh shoulders. This imagery is symbolic of us resting on God's shoulders. 
I remember I used to do this when I was a little kid and I remember feeling so woozy but excited sitting up so high on my dad's shoulders I felt like I was on top of a skyscraper and and that nothing can touch me not even my brother who liked to bully me when we were young he used to pull my legs and tease me and make me cry but but when I was on my dad's shoulders I was untouchable like my dad wasn't really tall but to me he was larger than life because I trusted him to keep me safe that's pretty much how God is for us. He is the hope we cling to. He's the rock we need when our personal storms drive us against the wall. I'm not sure if you've heard this before, but there there's a true story that hit the news a long time ago, um, sometime October 2004. It's about three teenage girls and one father who was a seasoned lifeguard. They, they went swimming off the coast of New Zealand and they were training as lifeguards. While they were out practicing about 100 meters away from the shore, suddenly a pod of dolphins approached them and circled them continuously. And this happened for, I think, about 40 minutes. The dad realized there was something wrong when the dolphins tried to herd them together. Like whenever a lifeguard, one of them would swim away, the dolphins would circle them tighter and tighter in such a protective manner so that all of the swimmers, the whole group would stay intact. It was at that point that the dad saw, lo and behold, a great white shark lurking just A few feet outside of that circle of dolphins, um, the lifeguards, all four of them, they didn't even know they were in such grave danger. Not not until much later. Um, For those of you who are interested in science, you um, bottlenose dolphins. They have they have been known to protect helpless creatures, and they did just that for these swimmers. Uh, whenever the shark came too close, um, the dolphins became hyper, like they agitated the water, they dived or slapped the water with their fins to create a screen, and that somehow camouflaged the swimmers. It was amazing, it's really amazing story. And the dolphins didn't leave, that's that's the best part. The dolphins never left, the, uh, they didn't leave the lifeguards, not until the shark disappeared. How cool is that, right? It's so nice. Um, This kind of human encounter with dolphins, it doesn't happen very often. And while I was thinking about it, something hit me on a spiritual level. This story, it was such a graphic way to describe how God also protects us from things we don't see. The truth is, we too are surrounded by lots of scary things. We are surrounded by many types of evils. There are sharks around us too. Um, Sharks like accidents waiting to happen or diseases not yet diagnosed. We are surrounded by people who want to do us harm either physically, mentally, or verbally through gossip or bullying. Yet the Lord circles us and wards them off. Some problems Well, still, God allows some problems to touch us, and that's for a glorious reason and mighty plan that He alone understands. God doesn't make us completely immune from trouble, but those sufferings we do encounter, the ones that we suffer, they're meant to shape us in holiness. They're meant to teach, to discipline. We still suffer because God needs to make us humble and dependent on Him. So what am I saying? What is your takeaway from all of these things I've shared? Friends, the bottom line is, God is our refuge. He's our hiding place. He is the shoulder that props us above the ground when our legs are too weak to stand. He is the circle of dolphins that keeps harm out of reach. Yes, it's a cruel world out there, but we can hope in the protection of a dad who promised to comfort us, who promised to heal us again, who promised to increase our greatness again.
So thank you, thank you, friends, for staying with me throughout this creative worship. This is Ginger from Our That Place and Praise. I hope you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon below for for future notifications. Next time and God bless you.